Good morning YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. So this video I want to talk about the 10,000 mile review of the 2020 Aprilia RSV4 1100 factory. I've owned this bike a little over three, three and a half years and I got just over 10,000 miles, 10,600 to be exact. And I want to give you my opinion on it and what it was like to own it for 10,000 miles. And am I going to get rid of this bike? Or am I going to keep it a little while longer? By the way, we're at the uh, nuclear power plant. So if I hear sirens or signals or orange smoke players, we need to beat feet, get on this thing, get out of here. Uh, there's a nuclear power plant just on the other side of these bushes. I just think the sign's pretty cool. Anyway, back to the bike. The first thing I want to talk about is the negatives, because there's not many. And excuse the dirt on the bike. Uh, I just took it to Western North Carolina for a week, rode it around there for a while. Those videos are coming out. Um, actually, I'm sorry, those videos are not coming out. The Colorado trip is coming out. Let's jump on the bike and let's talk about and get the negatives out of the way. And then we'll talk about what it was like to own it for three and a half years and 10,000 miles. All right, YouTube, let's talk about the negatives. There's few and far between. There's not many to talk about. But one of the biggest negatives to this bike uh, that I've encountered is it has a oil leak from the spark plug tube seal on the rear two cylinders. I know a lot of people have experienced something similar or some people experience a coolant leak. Uh, I think it's out of the water pump on the left hand side. I've not experienced a coolant leak but I do have the oil leak. Now my oil leak, I don't know about other people, but mine is pretty minor. In fact, it's just a seep. It's so minor that I'm not even going to worry about it. In fact, in about 2,000 miles, the major service, the valve cover, the valve check, and all that spark plugs, all that comes in where they have to take the valve cover off anyway, and they're going to replace that seal. It was $147 from AF1 Racing, and I could have just done it myself. But like I said, the seep was so minimal that I wasn't even really worried about it. Even between oil changes, and by the way, I do mine about every two to 3,000 miles, the seepage is so minimal that I didn't really notice any engine oil loss and it never made it to the bottom of the fairings or the ground so the bottom of the engine is totally dry but occasionally you'll see a little bit of um, oil residue on the side of the rear cylinder coming from the uh, valve cover gasket so what I do is I just rinse it off with some brake cleaner and you can not really tell so it's pretty minor I know some people have had it a lot worse than I have but I've not even had that problem so this bike I'm not gonna fix it until about two more thousand miles and then uh, it's got to get the valve check done anyway another uh, issue that I've had and I've only had this happen once but the bike runs really hot in general if you're sitting at a stoplight like earlier today I was at a stoplight and it got up to 234 degrees and uh, fan is blowing and it comes out of this hole right up onto your hand now normally I wear gloves the only reason I did right now is because I'm trying to hit the buttons on the camera and it's really hard to do with a, a glove on so anyway it blows up on your hand it's really hot it comes out on your ankles on your uh, calf on your, on your leg it's really hot the seat gets real hot and the one time uh, I think it was two summers ago I rode this motorcycle up to Washington DC and right around the streets of DC it was the summertime somewhere around July somewhere in that time frame and the bike actually got up to 241 degrees and the warning light came on the dash and it said something about overheating and uh, temperature and it's, it's all kinds of stuff started going on so I shut the bike off let it cool off for about 10-15 minutes it was fine after that but that only happened to me one time but the bike does get really really hot and so if you wear any kind of uh, clothing that exposes like your especially your left ankle or your hand in this case today I'm not wearing gloves but um, you're gonna notice the heat the heat is definitely a negative on this bike and I've heard the Ducati the Penigale is very similar to this so that's another negative uh, third negative that I've had with this bike is that I'd say probably last maybe 2,000, 3,000 miles or so, I've noticed that uh, sometimes it's really hard to get it from into neutral. And I mean like from second to first. Uh, so earlier I mentioned about this bike being in Cherokee. So 
about a month ago I was in Cherokee North Carolina and I was riding back home and I ran into some traffic on the interstate and it was stop and go stop and go just crawling traffic and I was in first gear and then occasionally you get some speed and then I go up to second and I, I cruise and then uh, have to go back to stopping and you know I'd be sitting there for a while and I was having trouble getting it into neutral it just would jump from second to first and back to second and it kept doing that back and forth back and forth to the point where I just had to hold the clutch in because I couldn't get it into neutral that was the worst time that's ever happened usually you just uh, miss it once or twice and then eventually it goes into gear but this last time when I was in Cherokee on the highway in stop and go traffic it was a bear it was unbelievable i could not for the life of me get it into neutral i've tried rolling it forward backwards just in everything and there was a couple times i just could not get into neutral uh so i don't know i don't know what that was all about and then of course the final thing that happened is so you know this bike unlike the regular rs 4 this is the factory edition the rr version at the time now it's like the base and the factory but you know what i'm talking about the the both model rs that one comes with a regular battery from the factory the the factory edition comes with a lithium ion battery which by the way is a little bit smaller i made a video about this uh earlier that my battery is failing and it doesn't do it in the warm temperatures like in the summertime but as soon as it starts getting cold or in the winter the bike it struggles to crank up it really does struggle and the you know the battery is only what four years old and i noticed it last winter but it wasn't as bad you know not this past one but the one before and but this past winter and in the spring usually i crank the bike up about once a week and let it run i don't use the tender i just crank it up once a week and if it's somewhat nice i'll take it down the street and back just to get everything moving but the battery was struggling struggling to start up in fact there's a couple times where it didn't and then i ended up going through this fiasco with trying to get a, a battery and if you haven't seen that just go check out my previous videos you'll see it in there uh about my battery dilemma uh so i still haven't replaced the battery just because in the warm temperature it's falling but this winter i'm gonna have to get a battery no no way around it and that's pretty much about it uh i do my own service on this bike so service costs for me are whatever an oil filter and oil costs and then of course tires uh but that's going to be you know standard across the board whatever you um whatever you tire you get and wherever you get mounted you know it varies but typically whatever it costs that's about the same on this bike i've not had to replace anything else uh that's about it now as far as what's it like to own it well that's a long story in itself but i'll sum it up in a nutshell it's been fantastic the bike is awesome does it have cons yes it overheats it doesn't like to go below about 3500 rpm it really struggles and lurches in fact let me show you what i mean we're at 3000 and and then when it just rumbles and chugs and it doesn't really like it it doesn't behave very well so the idea is keep it above about 4000 and you're fine nothing on this bike is aftermarket everything is exactly the way it was from the factory i did not do anything to this bike i left it alone it comes with a Kropovich uh silencer can and i love the sound of it now the other cons are yes it's very uncomfortable and no this bike does not belong on a city street it's too much too much power you can't extract it uh unless you're doing you know 200 miles an hour on the interstate like some of these other fools on on youtube that's great if that's what you do hey more power to you i don't do that i have a little bit more common sense uh to go that fast on the highway but this bike doesn't belong it belongs in one place and one place only and that's the racetrack and i don't race it i don't do track days i know i'm thinking about it now but i haven't yet so this bike doesn't make sense so that, which leads me up to my next point i've come to the conclusion that as cool as this bike is and as fun as it is and as as nice as it is 
it, it's not really practical for riding around on, on public roadways. And I do a lot of um, longer rides, like day trips. I've taken this bike on a thousand mile iron butt ride, believe it or not. If you haven't seen my, that video, go back in my video, check that out. And so it's not practical for long distance or anything like that. Of course, you know, you ask, well, of course not. Uh, why would it be? It's a sport bike. It's not intended for cruising and touring. Yes, I know, but it's the only bike I have right now. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I've done a lot. I've taken it to Quail the Dragon a couple times now. And it's fun when you get there, but getting there and getting home, it, it's, it's a bear. And I'm no spring chicken, to be honest with you. And so it's a little bit more uncomfortable for me. So in my opinion, if you're going to buy this bike, I don't know why you would buy it unless you're going to put it on the racetrack. It doesn't make sense for the street. But if you were to, I would recommend somebody younger than me <laughs> that intends to put it on the racetrack, but also uses it on the city street. Okay, that would make sense. But I definitely don't recommend this bike for the kind of riding that I do. I just bought this as a midlife crisis, which I tend to have one of those every couple of years. But <laughs> anyway, it's been my dream bike and I love the machine. It's amazing. I love this thing. And for a while there, I've been contemplating selling it. And because I love Aprilia and I love the way the V4 engine sounds, I love the looks, I love everything about it. I was thinking about trading it in or selling it and getting a Tuono, which makes way more sense for the city street. E even that is too much, but if you're gonna have an Aprilia, uh, the Tuono would be a good choice. Maybe the 660, but I really like the sound of the V4. So I would probably get the V4 anyway, but anyway, that's another story. But you know, honestly, uh, I thought about it and I'm like, you know, it would be, it would be cheaper, especially the fact that I'm going to be getting another motorcycle. It would actually be cheaper and more beneficial to just keep this and just tool around on it. Uh, you know, just ride around and have a good time and enjoy it and get a, uh, something more comfortable, a sport touring bike or whatever the case may be. And then uh, me and Mrs. RSV4 can, can ride longer distances and when my friends and I go riding, we can ride that and um, you know be comfortable and then this I would just keep and I think that's what I've decided to do I think I'm just gonna keep it I'm gonna do the valve check on it and uh, it's good for another you know 12,000 miles and obviously I won't be putting that many miles on this one so it'll be a long ways before I need another valve check so I think that's probably the smart way to go and I think that's what I decided to do as far as uh, other maintenance costs um, the valve check is the big one and it's coming up at 12,000, I think 500, something like 12,006, something like that. And it's going to be close to $2,000. Uh, they quoted me, I think, it, if I remember correctly, I think they said $1,700 to check it and do the spark plugs, you know, the, um, the basket seals, all that stuff. Everything, total tax and everything is about $1,700. But that's if there's no valve check needed if they have to adjust the valves it's going to be a little bit more so you're looking at close to two thousand dollars plus i'm probably going to have them put a brand new set of tires on in about two thousand miles these are the diablo rosso corsa twos i know they discontinued them now they have the rosso fours so i might do that one i'm not sure but anyway new tires and a valve check and then i'm going to rock this bike for, uh, quite a while longer because it really is a cool bike and the sound is amazing <laughs> I love the sound I love how it feels and you know it is uncomfortable but you know for shorter rides or you go out for a couple hours this thing's a hoot it's a it's a fun beast to ride and it's a fun machine so it'd be cheaper to just keep it overall the bike's been great. I've not had anything happen to it as far as mechanically nothing's gone wrong other than the minor oil leak. But again, it's so minor it's not even worth really messing with. Nothing's happened to it. It, start, it cranks up every time except in the winter when this battery's going dead. But uh, overall, outside of that, the, the bike is 100% reliable. I have not had anything fail on it. Nothing went wrong. Everything's great. I've enjoyed it. 
if you want to get an RS-V4 for whatever reason, uh, you know, you do you. I wouldn't recommend it, especially if you're on the street, but if you want to get one, I highly recommend it. I have not had any issues with it. You know, I think Aprilia has had a bad reputation for reliability. However, think about it this way. How many times do you see people leave comments on or reviews and say, Happen. Not as many as when people do uh, bad reviews. It's kind of like when you go to a restaurant. When you go to a restaurant, you go out to eat, everything's fine, and you go home and you go about your business. Do you go into every restaurant that you eat at and do a, a positive review? No. The only time you see reviews is when something really extraordinary happened or something bad happened, right? Because when something bad happens, people leave a review. So I think what happens is Yes, Aprilia has had some issues, sure, but so has every other manufacturer. My Yamaha sprung a leak uh, not long after I bought it. Minor leak, but it sprung a leak. So the, the point is, is I think the reviews that Aprilia got, the negative comments, excuse me, negative comments, I think they just got blown up and everyone's like, oh my god, you can't rely on Aprilia, this, that, and the other. No. Aprilia is reliable. Like I said, I've not had anything go wrong with it. it. It works perfectly. It's great. No issues. But I would say that if you are considering buying an RS-V4, I, I think the one thing you should consider is look at the Tuono. Especially if you're only going to do street riding, look at the Tuono. Because honestly, if this Instead of clip-ons that had handlebars that was a little bit more upright, my god, this thing would be awesome, especially for the road. So my advice is, if you want to get one, get one. You will love it. And I've had several people comment, and they're just worried about the reliability and has anything gone wrong and this, that, and the other. And I'm telling you, it, this bike has been no different than any others. I've had a Yamaha spring a leak. I had a valve train issue with my CBR 1000. You know, do they, does Aprilia have a little bit higher failure rate than, say, Honda or Yamaha? Maybe. Maybe. I'd have to see the statistics on it. But, overall, it's been a fantastic machine. And if you want to get one, I highly recommend it. If you're in the market, if this is if this is your dream bike, like it was mine, get you one. Get one and, and enjoy it. And have fun and, and be careful on it and have a good time. But, yeah. So, in a nutshell... My review of this Aprilia is the fact that it's nothing but great things to say with a couple little quirks, but you know, every bike has a quirk. No bike is 100% is sweet and perfect. If it is, let me know which one and I'll go buy it. <laughs> but, um, you know, and, and quirks are also different to different people, right? Which one thing might bother you, might not bother me, or vice versa. So I think all in all it's been a great machine over 10,000 miles 10,641 to be exact and I would get it again honestly uh, well I'd probably get the Tuono but if we're talking strictly sport bike not hyper naked or super naked whatever you want to call it then I would totally get an Aprilia would I get a Ducati the Pentagon into this no and honestly one of the main reasons is because I like the sound of this one better and I like the way it looks better. And that's a personal thing. Some people prefer the Ducati. It is a beautiful machine. I give it that. It is an amazing, beautiful machine. And would I want one? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Would I get one? Yes. But if I had to, this is my personal opinion, if I had, had to choose between the Aprilia and the Pentagali, I personally would pick the Aprilia. Just my personal preference. But anyway that pretty much sums it up if you have any questions about the aprilia the rsv4 or uh, anything in general leave a comment below and if you own one and you had any issues please please leave a comment i want to hear about it because uh, like i said i've just a couple minor little things not really even that big a deal but if you've had an issue with yours let me know because i really want to hear about it but thank you guys so much for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. <laughs>